What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm back with another schedule preview and record prediction. Today we're going to be going through the 2020 Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Notre Dame was a team a couple years ago that made the college football playoff. Of course, lost in the semifinal of the Clemson, never made it to the national championship game. And ever since then, has been okay, but hasn't been able to make it back to the college football playoff. Uh, I think this year Notre Dame has a more difficult schedule. Uh, than what Notre Dame fans are used to seeing. Uh, that is my personal opinion. Uh, and I think if Notre Dame gets through this schedule undefeated, then they're going to get into the playoff. But they just have so many questions to answer. Are you going to be able to replace Chase Claypool, Cole Komet? Can your defense and um, Ian Book step up? Well, you're about to find out what I think. Let's go ahead and let's look at their schedule. Here's the schedule for the Irish as I – said before I think it's more difficult than uh, uh, than in previous years for the Irish uh, before we dive into the schedule though you'll see down there 2019 record was 11 and 2 uh, 10 wins of course no conference championship games since they are an independent uh, and then 11 wins um, after they beat Iowa State in the bowl game so 11 and 2 last year and up there you can see our key Home games are going to be in Navy. Away games are going to be in gold. And then the neutral site games, there's two of them, are, all, are as always going to be in black. So let's just go ahead and dive right on into their schedule. First game of the season, week zero. So Notre Dame is going to be playing Navy in week zero in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, college game day is more than likely going to be there. Um, it's going to be such a great atmosphere. And I believe this is the first time that a college football game has ever been played in the great country of Ireland. Um, if I'm not mistaken. So big step for college football. Um, Navy, uh, interesting team last year, I think surprised a lot of people. Um, this year, though, they're losing Malcolm Perry at quarterback. It's, it's not looking good for Navy. They, um, there are still some playmakers. Uh, I'm leaning towards Notre Dame again. Notre Dame has so many question marks for me. Um, I think Notre Dame is going to be able to win this game. I think it's going to be close because Again, it's week zero, and there might not be a lot of practice, and so Notre Dame might not have a lot of time to figure out what they want to do. Um, but I'm going to go with Notre Dame early here. Uh, I just feel like Notre Dame um, has the upper hand, and they have more talent than Navy does, especially because Navy's losing Malcolm Perry. Give me the Irish. Then they have a bye week, of course, if Notre Dame. Play in the, if you play in week zero, you don't play in week one. Simple as that. Well, then they get to play Arkansas. Arkansas is bringing in the transfer quarterback, Felipe Franks, from Florida. Uh, maybe Felipe Franks can um, take Arkansas to the next step. I still think Arkansas is going to be in the bottom half of the SEC just because of how competitive the SEC is going to be this year, as with any other year. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this one long. Um, Felipe Franks does not have the playmakers that Ian Book does. Um, and Notre Dame's defense is just overall better, so I'll take the Irish here as well. Western Michigan, team good, uh, team that was good a couple years ago. Oh, when P.J. Fleck was the head coach. Of course, now he's the head coach of Minnesota. It was 13-0, I believe, uh, three or four years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Ever since then, Western Michigan's kind of been downhill. Nothing really to talk about Western Michigan. Um, nothing going for the Broncos. So I think Notre Dame will easily handle this one again. Too much talent on Notre Dame's side of the football. Then you look at their first true road game of the season. It's going to be against Wake Forest. Of course, Jamie Newman is out. Uh, Wake Forest, it, Jamie Newman was never even the starter at Wake Forest, kind of switched in and out with the other quarterback that's at Wake Forest. But I don't think uh, the quarterback at Wake Forest now is all that great. I don't think Wake Forest defense is all that great. I think Wake Forest has some playmakers on offense, a pretty good running game as well. Um, but when you have to match up against Notre Dame, I know it's on the road, but when you have to match up against Notre Dame, there really is no contest. Um, I think Notre Dame should easily win this one. Then it's their second neutral site game, the second most important game, in my opinion, or the second biggest game, I should say, in my opinion, on the schedule. It's going to be in Lambeau Field against the Wisconsin Badgers. It's basically going to be in Wisconsin's backyard. Um, I will tell you I'm leaning towards Wisconsin. Now here is what. Uh, I know Wisconsin has a lot of questions to answer, like Aaron Crookshake transferred out, so how good will their wide receivers be? So wide receivers, like Notre Dame, is going to be a question. But then also the running game. Um, but then when you look at Wisconsin, they're known for getting running backs in shape. Melvin Gordon, Corey Clement, Jonathan Taylor, all are in the NFL right now. Uh, they're the past three backs that they've had. So 
I'm not worried about Wisconsin's running game at all. Um, and I think Wisconsin's defense is a little bit better than Notre Dame. Um, it is uh, week five. Um, so Notre Dame might have a couple things figured out by that. I don't think they're going to have everything figured out. Notre Dame has a lot to fill. Um, and it's in Lambeau Field. I like the Badgers here in this one. Um, I think it's going to be cl very close. Very, very close. I cannot wait to watch this game. But I'm going to give Wisconsin the upper hand here. Um, I just think they have more talent. Then they get to play Stanford at home. Uh, ever since Bryce Love left, Hogan left. Stanford has just been a down, down team. I think this year is going to be no different. Of course, KJ Costello transferring out, going over to Mississippi State. So I think Stanford is going to have a down year, um, as they have had in the past couple seasons as well. I think Stanford has the talent to get back up, and now with KJ Costello gone, they have to fill in the quarterback. And with the state of the world right now, we don't know how much practice we're going to have. So I, I'm looking like Notre Dame is going to pretty easily beat Stanford. Then you have an away game against Pitt. So Pitt was a team that surprised a lot of people last year. I believe they went like 7-5 and five or 8-4, and four, which is a lot better than uh, people thought Pitt was going to do. Uh, I was surprised with Pitt. Um, Pitt has some good playmakers, uh, some good playmakers on both sides of the ball. I think Notre Dame has more playmakers, so I, I'm leaning towards Notre Dame in this game. Um, also the fact that I think quarterback play is going to come into a lot in this game. Uh, both very similar style of, of play uh, when you compare Notre Dame and Pitt. So I think the quarterback play is going to show out, and I think Ian Book is ultimately going to be the better quarterback. So I like Notre Dame in this game against Pitt. Again, wouldn't be surprised if it was close, um, but I like Notre Dame. Then you have your bye week. A fairly good place for a bye week. I think if you're a Notre Dame fan, you'd want it one week later uh, before the Clemson game. but it's a fairly good spot for a bye week. It's after a road game, which is always nice. It's like in the middle of the season, which is nice. Um, get a chance to kind of regroup a little bit. So fairly good spot for a bye week. After the bye week, they have to play Duke. Um, Duke was good a couple of years ago for maybe like a week or two, we all thought. Um, Duke was a team like in and out of the polls a couple of years ago. Uh, they've been down since. Duke has a couple playmakers. They don't have as many playmakers as Notre Dame, though. I mean, I think we all can agree on that. Um, I think when you look on paper, this is a complete mismatch. Um, I think Duke is going to be somewhere in the middle of the ACC next year, but when you have to play Notre Dame, it doesn't even help they play them at home. I think Notre Dame is going to easily win this game. Then you look at the game that everyone is talking about for Notre Dame and for Clemson as well. It is this game right here. Clemson at Notre Dame, November 7th. Probably going to be the Saturday night game. Um, there are a couple other games going on that week as well. I think LSU Alabama also played that week. So uh, not a bad week for college football. Um, but back to this game, Notre Dame and Clemson. This is going to be a great game, I think. I think this is going to be a closer game than a lot of people think. Um, I think Notre Dame can match Clemson well at home for maybe three quarters, three and a half quarters. Um, the one thing Notre Dame could not do, though, is I don't think Notre Dame can give Clemson a double-digit lead. If Clemson gets a double-digit lead, I think the game is over. Enough said. I don't think Notre Dame is going to be able to come back against Clemson. Clemson's got the best uh, quarterback, running back, wide receiver tree in all college football with Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, and Justin Ross. Um, three of the top guys that play their position in all of college football. Um, I, right now, see no way Notre Dame can win this game. Again, too many questions. I know they're going to have most of it figured it out by now. And it's a home game for Notre Dame, but I do not like their chances against Clemson. I think Clemson, uh, along with Ohio State, those two teams are far and away better than anyone else in college football this year. Um, I, I don't like Notre Dame's chances, so I'm going to lean towards the Tigers on this one. Then they get an away game against Georgia Tech. Um, I'm not going to talk about this one long. Georgia Tech going to be in the bottom of the ACC again, in my opinion. Um, I think. Well, Georgia Tech has been known to surprise a couple teams, like they surprised Florida State a couple years ago. They've given a lot of really good teams a lot of really close games. Um, I know it's on the road, but I don't think Georgia Tech has enough talent. Like um, Georgia Tech just doesn't have enough talent uh, as they did in previous years. They have a little less talent, again, bringing in a not-so-great recruiting class. I don't see Notre Dame having a problem with the Yellow Jackets. Then the last two games are interesting. They get to play Louisville. 
at, at home. Uh, I think this is going to be a great game to watch um, because I think Louisville's supposed to be good. I know they lost Makai Becton to the draft, um, but their offensive line, otherwise, for the most part, is really good. Uh, their quarterback is, in my opinion, going to be one of the more underrated quarterbacks in all of college football. Their defense is pretty solid as well, so they match up really well with Notre Dame. Again, what pushes it over for me, I'm leaning towards Notre Dame. It's a home game, and I think Notre Dame is going to have every all – every single bit of their problems figured out uh, before this game. I like Notre Dame in this one. Again, I'm not going to be surprised if this is a close one, um, but I like Notre Dame. Then the last game of the season, you all know it, Notre Dame-USC, one of the greatest rivalries in all of college football. It's a road game for the Irish, um, but I'm, I'm, le- I'm still leaning towards the Irish because I'm not ready to overhype USC quite yet. We've been doing that for the past two or three years. And USC has not performed. Clay Helton just needs to get his act together. Uh, they're returning Keaton Slavs, which is a big, big point. Um, but USC just – USC's got to get it together. USC's got to start playing like a team. And then they lost Michael Pittman. But USC's got playmakers, so they can compete with Notre Dame. I'm leaning towards the Irish because I think the Irish are going to have all of their problems figured out by now. They're going to find someone to replace Chase Claypool. Everyone's going to be playing at the next level. Um, uh, honestly, I think Notre Dame shouldn't have a problem with this game unless USC proves to be something special. So with everything being said, considered, thought through, yada, yada, my prediction for Notre Dame in the 2020 season is 10-2. and two. Again, those two losses are to Wisconsin and Clemson. And to reiterate, uh, I think Wisconsin has more holes filled than Notre Dame. That's why I'm leaning towards Wisconsin there. And then for Clemson, I just don't see any way that Notre Dame can beat Clemson. I don't. I, I, can, I can see it being close, but I don't see Notre Dame ever getting over that hump. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to our record range. What our record range is, is I take this team's worst case scenario along with the team's best case scenario. Worst case scenario I have for Notre Dame is eight and four. Again, if they just never gel, especially towards the end of the season, they're going to start losing a lot of games. Uh, if you look at their front half of the season, it's pretty easy compared to the back half of the season. Um, again, front half of the season, Wisconsin definitely stands out. I think that's an easy loss in this scenario. Um, but again, worst case scenario, they start the season five and one for me. Um, I, I see the or the Navy game being close, but I don't see Notre Dame losing that one in any scenario um, unless the replacement for Malcolm Perry is really, really, really good. Um, but I see them in this scenario losing to Wisconsin, then in the back half of the schedule, them losing to Clemson, Louisville, and USC. Um, again, I don't see any way they can beat Clemson. Uh, as far as the Louisville game goes, again, it could be competitive, and if Notre Dame doesn't gel, they could lose that one. And then USC, of course, it's a road game, and USC is bound to be good this year as well. So worst case scenario, 8-4. and four. Best case scenario, 11-1. and one. Now the reason their best case scenario is not 12-0 and 0 is, again, I've said it twice. I'm going to say it a third time. There's no way that they can beat Clemson. In my opinion, Notre Dame does – I think they have a shot at beating Clemson, but realistically, I don't see Notre Dame beating Clemson. I think Clemson is too good. Um, but the ACC is supposed to get better this year, and Clemson's only going to get better as well, bringing in a really good recruiting class. I just don't see any way Notre Dame can compete. But aside from that game, what if they gel really early? They can smash Navy, get through Arkansas – Western Michigan, Wake Forest real easily, as I think they will anyway. And then they can come out and surprise me and probably a lot of other people and beat Wisconsin. I don't know a lot of people that are counting on Notre Dame to win this game. Um, I, I, I'm just not. Uh, but if they can pull it out, I mean, they could, they're going to easily get to Clemson 8-0, in my opinion, if they can get through a Wisconsin undefeated. Um, but again, I don't see them beating Clemson at all. So my best case scenario for them is 11-1, but my current prediction, 10-2. and two. All right, so that's going to do it for my schedule preview and record prediction for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. I'd, that'd be greatly appreciated. Also, if you're new to the channel, do consider subscribing if you just enjoy the content that I put out. Or uh, and please, if you haven't done so already, leave a comment down below. I read through every single one. It means a lot when you guys comment on my stuff, give me some feedback. Also, give me your uh, predictions for Notre Dame. What do you have them going? Uh, what are some things maybe you think I missed or what's a um, you know, valid point you think I brought up that you never thought about before? Just give me some feedback down in the comment section down below. I really do read through everything. It means a lot. 
uh, to read feedback and say I have people that care about me. And until next time, remember, play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.